All right, so I've been in New Zealand the last three to four weeks. The champion, the middleweight champion, Israel Adesanya, hit me up after the Alex Pereira knockout. He hit me up to do some jiu-jitsu training. Izzy is a purple belt in jiu-jitsu, loves jiu-jitsu. He spent time training with Andre Galvao at Atos in San Diego. I think he did like six weeks there. Um, he persuaded me to come spend some time with the city kickboxing guys. I have worked with some of these guys before through the connection with uh, Alex Volkanovsky. Volks trains at Freestyle MMA in Wollongong. CKB are in Auckland, New Zealand, and from time to time, those guys will cross over and help train with each other. I think they tied together originally in Thailand. They all met at Tiger Muay Thai back in the day. And currently, they own Bang Tao uh, in Thailand, so they still got the band together over there. But I came down, and I was teaching jiu-jitsu the whole month. 9 a.m. is their pro session, so I would teach five days a week there. And then twice a week they have a jiu-jitsu class at night, and I took that over. So I got to train a bunch with these guys, uh, really MMA-focused. I've spent a lot of time training MMA-focused grappling just through my work with uh, Volkanovski. So it was good to be able to show them some of the stuff I've been working on with Volks. Um, did a bunch of wool work with them, wool wrestling as well. So that's always a good time. I love wool wrestling because in jiu-jitsu when there's there's no cage or no wool really like it's two guys backing up moving forward and uh, with the wool behind you can really pin a guy a guy can't really run away you can trap him against the cage the wall and work your takedowns there and it adds a totally different dynamic I think a lot of jiu-jitsu guys would love wool work a lot more than they'd love wrestling in open space you don't have to be as, as athletic against the wall to be successful we cover some fun stuff for the video. So we're showing Uchimata, Uchimata to flying triangle, and Uchimata to rolling to the legs. So really obviously some high risk techniques here, but really it's good. You wanna have some of these high risk moves because you wanna be able to make things happen when time's running out, or you wanna be able to force grappling exchanges if you're really struggling to get the fight or the grappling match to the ground. So you wanna be dynamic in, you've got standard takedowns, you've got takedowns that lead into submissions, takedowns that lead into upper and lower body submissions, and takedowns where you can see to your back momentarily only to come back on top. Things that are unusual, things you wouldn't learn, at a wrestling, um, sort of under a standard wrestling program because obviously based on the rules of wrestling, guys aren't conceding anything. So yeah, it adds a new dynamic and it's a way you can sort of use jujitsu to win some wrestling exchanges. So you see again, some fun stuff working off the Uchimata here. Oh, other big man. So CKB, the guys do King of the Wall, I believe every Friday at, um, during the 9 a.m. session after the technical portion of training. These guys love it, it's real competitive. They're trying to work out who is um, the best wool wrestler that day. They have obviously bragging rights on it. You'll see a lot of the guys like Kai Kara France really just look so dominant against the wool, rarely get beaten here. They'll split up the smaller guys and the bigger guys. Yeah, it's super fun to watch. I was just spectating for this one because I had the, uh, the injured staff burst. I didn't even know what it was. But yeah, I jumped in with these guys later on. And yeah, super fun working the wool work with these guys. <laughs> so I think Izzy, Izzy wanted to work with me because uh, we hung out a bit in Perth when Alex for Islam, got along really well, did some training, uh, have a similar body type as well. So I think that uh, interested him in seeing how I train. And then again, when we did train, obviously super safe super fun, focusing on a lot of technical, uh, technical problem solving. You know, we're not just trying to kill each other. If you see how CKB approaches their stand up, it's probably the highest level of kickboxing, MMA striking in the world. These guys innovated uh, really the faint game for MMA. You really don't see a lot of guys using it as successfully as these guys. These guys put a lot of technique behind the striking. So I believe I tried to fill some of that void that they might potentially have on the ground given that uh, they don't have a super high level black belt that resides in New Zealand, train them full time. But again, MMA gyms can function without that because if you have a high level of wrestling, you can work around that. But yeah, it was good to obviously try to fill that void for them on the ground, provide some really technical answers in case Izzy has any potential 
wrestlers or grapplers coming up that he might potentially have to fight because even guys that aren't going to necessarily be grapplers or wrestlers might approach a fight with Izzy with that strategy just knowing how dominant he is on the feet so he has to be ready for anything he has to be good at fighting off his back in case he gets taken down during a fight Izzy's style of grappling is very, very good in scrambles. He's very hard to control, especially when he has legs in front. He's super hard to pin down, hold down. He's really good at creating scrambles, standing back up. He has a surprisingly dangerous close guard. He shoots a lot of triangles, goes for a lot of arm bars. Just, he really has a lot of fun when he's grappling. And he, yeah, again, super hard to control, super unpredictable, and a lot of, a lot of high level technique within that game. It was good to spend some time in New Zealand. New Zealand really shouldn't be a country. It should rather be a state of Australia. It's, uh, when I was there, a great place to be. It rained every single day I was there. So spot on New Zealand weather. Actually did remind me of my time in Melbourne where it would rain every single day. But yeah, it was great to, uh, to mix it up, be back on my side of the world for a bit, hanging out with some sort of like-minded guys, similar accent. Americans, you probably think it's the same fucking accent, but was great time uh, training with those guys over at CKB. Again, obviously it's fun for me to help them out, but it's also cool for me to be exposed to a world-class MMA gym obviously Israel one of the greatest MMA fighters of all time so just to be a part of his camp was a great experience it reminded me a lot of Alexander Volkanovsky's work ethic obviously uh, we've done I've done a few camps with him now he's got his fight with the I Rodriguez coming up I'll be competing one week before Volks will be there in the corner I'll hang in Vegas for UFC fight week prepare any last minute sort of stuff we need to work on for Volks and I got to spend more time with Volks when we, we went with Izzy and Volkanovski, who became the two first prime sponsored athletes. And I got to watch them uh, train with Logan Paul, which is obviously a good time. Excited to see Alex Volkanovski finish A.E. Rodriguez with a Boston Crab. And then don't be surprised when Israel Adesanya hits a flying buggy choke in his next title defense.